இங்கிலீஷ் பேசலாம் இல்லைங்களா சார் இல்ல தமிழ்ல பேசலாம் தெரிய <laughs> 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 So warm welcome to all the participants. It's the time to uh, we have a happy Elephant Day 2021. Today, August 12th, we are celebrating at present now. The warm welcome to uh, Rajapalayam Rajas College Management and the Secretary, President of Rajapalayam Rajas College and the Principal of Rajapalayam Rajas College and the Faculty Member of Rajapalayam Rajas College and my dear participants, without your support, we can't reach this level. So welcome to all the participants at this present situation. And also, I welcome our resource person, Dr. R. Sanil, sir, who immediately accepted our invitation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's the time to intro our uh, eminent resource person now. It's Dr. Ravichandran Pillai Sanil, the Associate Professor, Molecular Biodiversity Lab, Department of Quality and Wildlife Biology, Government Arts College, Udaka Mandalam. And Papers in peer reviewed journals is near about target 25 and are the proceeding 6 and the book published are Sanil edited tribal development and social scene in the Nilgiri district print independent 2008 and edited endemic and endangered species of the Nilgiri 2008 and are Charles also presented and uh, participated in various seminars and conferences and also as a resource person and the chairperson on the details of the research project completed undertaken human animal conflict in the neel grid a study to suggest conservational strategies micro planning for fringe village development around mudumalai a study of process of initiating eco development in mudumalai socio economic and forest dependent analysis among inhabitants of enclaves of mudumalai conflict studies on the impact of biotexts in near shore coral areas of fox bay and the site of chemistry and drug discovery from the soda medical plant and the pre predator relationship at mudumalai tiger reserve biodiversity and ecosystem function of soil fauna and its influence in various vegetation types in the neel grid study of status some distribution and ecology of a lesser cat in coastline tracts of southern western ghat genetic level variation of hemoglobinos cis and glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogen among badogas of the nilgiris hills and the academic positions held members of board of studies in microbiology periyar university member pg board of zoology bharathiyar university senate member bharathiyar university chairman ug board of zoology bharathiyar university coordinator state integrated board of zoology Tamil Nadu State Council for Higher Education 2017-2018 Member PG Board of Zoology Bharathiyar University Member Academic Council Bharathiyar University Member of Senate Bharathiyar University 2019 onwards Sir welcome sir Thank you sir Thank you so much sir The session is on your hands sir Okay Sir thank you for the <laughs> wonderful introduction uh, and uh, giving me an opportunity Uh, to join with you especially the raju college and uh, uh, happy to meet uh, and uh, be the part of your nature club because uh, i'm wanted to see that uh, we have uh, conducted a lot of uh, webinars uh, related to biodiversity and you are celebrating uh, every uh, days of importance and uh, it's a, it's a wonderful thing because even our department is a wildlife biology department we don't used to celebrate all the days and every functions occasionally we used to do uh, elephant day or wildlife uh, conservation week and all these things we, used to, we used to celebrate but it's a continuously you are celebrating and you are doing a lot of efforts 
to make awareness of the biodiversity that's a wonderful thing sir your effort is will will stand always and this effort uh, is a guideline for the young generation uh, who is just learning biodiversity conservation and other. thank you sir so much just let me say congratulations to you uh, for, first of all and uh, will it from uh, resource person like you sir it's all the thing the resource person like you and the participant uh, okay sir uh, see sir i have introduced that uh, i am uh, that position and other things but let me say that i am simply a teacher i'm not an expert in uh, like dr isha or dr suguma to talk about more about elephants i'm a biologist and a wildlife biologist i have passion to as well as biology or to as a biodiversity mostly to as a biodiversity in conservation so i do is to do research because uh, in uh, after my college days no after my uh, post graduation i got a csr fellowship and i took uh, uh, my phd in bio uh, in biochemistry but when after joining the wildlife biology department i Uh, left that biochemistry portion and started researching in this uh, uh, conservation and other aspects so so what i'm going to share is uh, something that i share, that i have learned during my research uh, experience about uh, the elephants and other things and uh, let me say a belated elephant day wishes to all of the participants who are listening me uh, through the youtube and uh, uh, because it's uh, six o'clock because almost all the celebrations has been over till late but uh i i born see i am a native of nil greece but i born and educated at, uh, in kerala uh, why i used to say why i say it here is uh, uh, in kerala the elephants are the part of the life their life because uh, every festivals or every functions that have uh, elephants as a portable part and there are when some film actors come to our city we used to rush to see uh, that particular actor or actress similarly i have seen many people uh, in kerala during my young days that uh, they they are fans of the elephant they know the name of the elephant that an elephant these elephant and they travel more than 200 250 kilometers to see the cap that's a captive elephant to eat in a festive season and to enjoy its beauty and other things they when when that elephant die they cry for it okay so such a passion i have seen when my young days while i am a student when i return to nil greece no when i when uh, nil greece but the scenario is different here because it's a forested area you know that uh, there are a lot of forests and every day when we travel from metropolium to uh, kunur i mean to uti or from uti to wayanad or through mudumalai or something no at that every time we are in expecting an encounter of an elephant and uh, while that people the people of kerala they they have a pamper feeling to as elephant but we are but people mean he means nilgiri people when travel through this forest region they are afraid of the elephant on encountering an elephant okay so this is the different aspect i have seen uh, during my two different ages of my life and my presentation will also carry such let me see an example uh, one day while i was uh, traveling to uh, tapakaru i mean it's in mudumalai region uh, in my car and uh, uh, that is uh, around 36 heading down uh, the nilgiri i mean the uti so after getting after getting down this much of height in in a, in a fast drive when i i stop my car i stop my car and take it's not a forest area it's a, a sub fringe area or i mean it's a forest boundary okay so i stop my car bushes are there okay so i stop my car and to relax late for, for relaxing I, i get down along with my fellow passengers also get down no? suddenly i saw an elephant a huge elephant with long tuskers is just meters Uh, apart from us it is just coming out of the bush the situation is so pathetic we even can't ex- escape from the elephant if it charges us okay what that elephant do do anything okay it just see on us cross the road so, uh, when 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 the second time also when i visit that place i learned from the uh, villages and i used to go there occasionally and that time learned that this is an elephant which is commonly seen in that place Uh, it have a small uh, damage near the trunk i mean the proboscis and uh, this elephant is been by the villages it will not attack any people and like that okay so its name is called as rivaldo you may have read in the newspapers because in the tamil nadu dailies it was uh, not only in tamil nadu in national daily the name was there continuously the name was there okay because uh, 
uh, because due to some incident, people want to some people want to remove it from the close proximity of the villages and uh, uh, want to give some treatment. These are the pictures that the forest department attracted this elephant to a cage or a crawl that is uh, kept around uh, seven kilometers apart because it's a very difficult process to attract the elephant because we cannot uh, dart it and uh, take the elephant because the forest department, what they do, you know, they show some food and attracted the elephant day by day and they get into a crawl and they treated the elephant. Around the one crore rupees the uh, forest department spend on the elephant and uh, to feed it, to treat it. And then they release it in another forest so that they thought it will not return back to its original place uh, as it is healthy. But uh, very next day it reappeared in the same place and uh, around five days before, five days before this happened, okay, uh, reappeared in the same place. And uh, this again came to the news. Uh, but still, uh, that elephant did not cause any harm uh, to any people uh, there because okay so uh, why uh, people who are I have seen an observation that I made an sorry I made an observation that uh, people who are outside or uh, staying in the rem in the plains I mean from Coimbatore or someplace and else no not hills no they are so uh, uh, curious about the elephant and uh, they are talking more about the elephant, the elephant conservation, but the people in the hills, I don't know because uh, as they may have seen the elephant daily, they are not speaking anything about elephant or elephant conservation. That's a, that's a major thing. Of course, there are quite, I don't, I'm not saying that all the people, there are conservationists, there are biologists, there are people who are caring about the elephant, but most of the people, in a, in a general sense, you know, in a layman point, I'm speaking that the people who are uh, in the hills are not more there about the elephant conservation more, but the people who are in downhills, I mean in the Plato, I mean in the Coimbatore or Chennai or uh, some other places, you no, know, they are more uh, speaking about why we have to conserve the elephant, why you have to conserve the elephant. That is the main question. So my talk, in this my talk, I wish to say, uh, because uh, you may have heard about the elephant talks and people may uh, display some uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, habitat uh, Defer, uh, the, this thing, no, and uh, elephant attacks, and other things. that is the main. Uh, when we speak about the elephant conflicts and other things, and human animal conflict, people used to display such type of angle. But I wish to say some in a different angle. I am I wish to say about some biology of the elephant, some biology of the elephant, how the elephant is living in the forest, and uh, how uh, how and, and the, the poaching aspect and how the elephant parts when seized, you know, how it has been identified, all these things. I think uh, some, at least uh, this type of uh, talk, this, this type of talk may not be, may not be so familiar to you because, uh, uh, but if you go in and go in another angle, you know, like that about the conflicts, uh, fencing and other things, that, that, uh, that will be a repetition. So I think I'll take another angle. And I'll speak some about some biology of the elephant and other things you now in that way. Okay, so why we need to conserve the elephant? Because these species are called, uh, these species are protecting the environment. Protecting the environment in the sense means the, when these elephants, these animals, there are some species which are called as umbrella species. Elephants, species like elephants, not only, not alone the elephant, but many other species. They are clustered and it is commonly called as umbrella species or flag species, flagship, sorry, flagship species or keystone species. In these, these terms are commonly used to, sep, uh, to represent certain fauna or certain animals uh, which have its own important importance in modulating the ecosystem when we when we remove such type of species like uh, uh, keystone species from an environment it causes some backlashes it causes some backlashes to the environment that in the sense means let me say an example if an elephant is depending on a particular i mean certain, sorry uh, if a particular animal is depending upon a particular tree I'm not mentioning about the coconut tree, a tree which having fruits and uh, um, uh, having seeds, you know. If elephant is feeding on that and elephant um, uh, put the dung of the, including the uh, seed as a dung, you know, in, in the dung and uh, if it will be defecated in some place in a forest, you no. Know, that will that will help it to be the propagation or uh, it is uh, the propagation of the species or a particular fauna, but flora, sorry. But uh, when we remove a particular species like uh, such type of uh, keystone species from an environment, uh, no other species, no other faunal components may eat that particular fruit. And there are chances that uh, 
the species do not get a dispersion in that particular forest and that can result in the termination or uh, may vanish from the uh, in uh, vanish from that particular forest okay so in such type there are other species may which may have depending on the particular floral component i mean the plant and that species will also get affected in turn the entire species may and entire habitat may change other type of species may gen germinate and the nature of the forest will change so such type of species which protect the environment or which is which has been act as or just been an icon of the particular environment are generally referred by many times like umbrella species or flag species or keystone species as per iucn as uh, uh, the, the elephants are considered as endangered endangered species Elef asian elephants especially are considered as endangered because they are facing a great threat of extinction that's why it is classified as uh, uh, endangered by iucn and it is uh, because of this threat uh, the it is also in the uh, our first appendix of the sites so this these efforts these efforts are to show how much threat elephants are facing its own, in its own home habitat means south india like uh, uh, the western guards no these are the main uh, existing uh, important habitat of uh, asian elephant as being a uh, biologist i used to say uh, i used to say about the evolution i'm most interested in evolution how these species are evolved uh, because when we study about some species and some distribution of some certain species we can answer the thing by looking at its evolution and the pattern uh, and the, the way how it has been distributed okay and the uh, uh, pro, uh, the, uh, uh, the ramji and the, this uh, the raju college who is organizing this is also he is a professor ramji sir is also from history department so i thought i'll say a little history that means the uh, evolution of the elephant okay so elephants are supposed to originated around 5 to 6 million years back okay so uh, and i'm not speaking about the a primitive um, primitive stock of elephant i'm just speaking about the elephant like creatures i'm not talking about mario mastodon or mauritrus which is existing uh, years back you know billion years back and i'm speaking about the elephant elephant like creatures this is may have been evolved from certain type of species short uh, short species which having long proboscis no uh, so the elephants are generally in general elephants are uh, evolved around 5 million years ago and uh, uh, many type of offshoots many type of elephants has existed in this earth elephants were distributed throughout the world except in antarctic uh, australia where we don't get any observations or fossils so other than these places no arctic and arctic and uh, australia we got elephant uh, uh, fossils from almost all places throughout the world so it is it, even though it has an origin most origin in africa Uh, it was present throughout the world it was present throughout the world in around 10000 years around 10000 years just imagine around 10000 years back 10 to 15000 years back there existed four major types of elephant mammoth elephant asian elephant so called asian elephant presently uh, african elephant and there are uh, uh, mammoth and uh, uh, there is um, mastodons these are these are the elephants these are the different types of elephants existed in different part of the world and most of the species have been vanished and at present only two species are uh, uh, present living that all you know this one is african elephant and second is called as the asian elephant african elephant is represented as loxodonta it is a different uh, genera and while it used to say generic name generic name in the sense means uh, it is uh, that itself uh, indicates that it's not a close relative it's a different relative because these are two genera even though it have been originated from a common uh, stock these are the two elephants at present existing we got the entire skeleton not only entire body of the mammoths from the siberian region where uh, it is been preserved in the ice okay other uh, if if we ignore that no if we ignore that the presently living species are these two species that is uh, elephant uh, asian elephant and generally simply called as african elephant these are the two categories of elephants that african elephant when we considering the african elephants there are the genetic analysis have identified there are two types of african elephants are there uh see so you can see that one is bush elephant and another is called as forest elephant the genetic analysis revealed even the morphology itself is different okay 
the genetic analysis shows that there are two types of elephant african elephant is not a single a type or a single species of elephant they though they belonging to the same genera uh, they, there are two different species and they are different totally different so when identifying these two type of uh, elephants the and the asian elephant specialists they developed the curiosity and the experts of the elephant they started doing genetics work uh and they identified that according to their concept still there are arguments regarding that i'm not going to that aspect because it's not our uh, area or it's not coming in our talk no so more genetics i'm not talking as see i'm let when we considering this now we uh, the, the genetic scientists uh, under I mean, after studying the genetics of uh, asian elephant they classified it into three subspecies they are not been classified into two subspecies or three subspecies three, two species or uh, three species as it had done for african elephant and in case of elephant and elephant the studies have shown that there are four different types of subspecies of elephants that is one is the indian elephant that is called as indicus it is elephants are commonly called as uh, asian elephants are commonly called as uh, asia uh, elephas maximus that is indicus and uh, the second one is maximus maximus is uh, the, Af the sri lankan elephant sri lankan elephant and uh, there is another elephant called as uh, sumatran elephant that is commonly called as sumatransis there is a third of species and fourth it's a short elephant that is uh, borneensis that is present in the borneo let me show the distribution of the asian elephants here you can see most of the elephants are distributed in the indian subcontinent in the indian subcontinent uh one minute let me take some so this is uh, this is the region where uh, elephants are uh, uh, present through in the asian range of this these are the asian elephant range where uh, it present it is seen here only and uh, major list in, in in considering uh, of course there are some part of china and uh, other parts of uh, this now uh, are present but majorly it is seen in, uh, in this region only and uh, the here in this region is the this is the african elephant this is the african elephant and uh, sorry sorry yeah, sri lankan elephant and uh, here it is the uh, indian elephant here this in this round is it is the indian elephant and this is the this is the place where this uh, this is the place where this uh, Uh, this uh, sumatran elephant is present and here it is a island named as borneo and where this uh, borneo elephants are present so it is distributed and uh, the subspecies has been due to patch distribution you can see that the elephants are present in patches or separated or isolated pockets that's why this uh, uh, subspecies may have been occurred so these are the presently these are the three four different types of elephants present here and even uh, you can see that uh, uh, what are uh, what type of creature it is or it's it's a herbivore we know that we all know that it's a herbivore it's depending upon the uh, plant materials for its uh, food Uh, the study is uh, the scientists have studied the, about the feeding habitat what they feed and in seasonal difference all these things and sense and stuff studied and they found that according to the season according to the season the food habitat of the elephant may change i mean if it is a rainy season the forest and the associated regions will be fully lush green and then elephant used to browse on the trees and uh, eat leaves fruits and uh, uh, the bark or something whatever it available no or uh, it will be and if imagine if the climate is been changed and it's a dry season and elephant is roaming in a forest in example like this just forest where leaves may uh, may fall uh, during the winter season or uh, and that the dry season no and the, at that time at that time it mostly depend on the grass grass so uh, there are control there are still controversies that uh, uh, when uh, regarding how how much uh, uh, browses and why the dress is and okay this is what i am speaking is in a general sense and uh, the feeding habitat of the percentage of the browsing or it depending on the grass may depend according to the uh, subspecies or the location where the elephants are been uh, distributed and uh, you can see when if you observe an elephant you can see most of the day it is roaming around and feeding and feeding it's a large it have a large biomass the body is so large and it need a lot of energy for its metabolism so wh what happened they what what they used to do they used to eat they spend uh, for to keep feeding all the day uh, maximally to the possible level they used to feed Uh, and uh, around it said that some scientists have said that it's around the feeding around the 150 kg of wet weight per day 
and how many times it is defecating it is defecating around 16 to 18 times a day so what is importance in defecation i mean the, the defecations because it's so important why it is important no the elephant is de- taking a large number of biomass whatever it may be fruits or something or uh, something whatever it may be and when it defecate two things will happen one if seeds are there it get a good environment because uh, when it in the gut no uh, there are a lot of uh, digestive enzymes act on these uh, seeds and uh, uh, so that it will g- create an environment that it can grow or uh, grow or uh, uh, come out easily and second thing the elephant is not uh, putting its dung on a particular place it's walking or roaming around an elephant it is i have heard that its elephant used to uh, walk 22 kilometers a day a day around approximately around 22 kilometers a day uh, so uh, what happened now this uh, when they defecate uh, throughout the forest that is manuring the forest they are doing manuring the forest so that's what's why the defecation of elephant or uh, dung importance of why we why, why people are concentrating more on the studies of the dung and other things and the home range uh, what do you mean by home range home range is the range where a particular see i am living in an i am living in uti my home range is around 20 kilometers because my house is at kunnur uh, and i used to travel to my college around 20 kilometers and come back and uh, more than that i go for my basic needs around to nearby place so my around approximately my home range can be say around approximately around 20 kilometers similarly similarly an elephant home range some scientists are saying that the elephant home range can be up to uh, 600 kilometers but this is not in agreement with other scientists who are working in sri lanka they are saying that in our country the home range is in sri lankan elephant the home range is it is small and similarly uh, the people who are working in the north india are also saying that the elephant home range is small but uh, in case of uh, elephants in the western ghats in the southern india uh, it should be i wish to say that uh, most of the wild ranging elephant around 50 50% 50 of the wild roaming elephants are in southern india itself india itself and uh, the major part is in the southern india and the rest is only be shared by other countries and other things no i am speaking about the uh, wild ranging elephants right wild ranging wild elephants in the wild not tamed elephants most of the population is located in india okay so this home range is if uh, you can see that uh, I, i have i think you you people most of you are so interested in elephants and you may have uh, heard about a journey that elephants have undertaken in china uh, in china the elephant population is very uh, few and uh, these elephants they don't know why they have tra- they started traveling one day a, a group of elephants start traveling they don't know why it started people are making some theories that uh, that uh, one started moving so others also joined its company but we don't know still now we don't know why it started moving and the actual uh, motivation be, uh, uh, for that uh, movement and it moves around this much of kilometers you see in the drones and satellites are tracking the elephant now they are, after reaching a particular destination they are returning back they are returning back now they are in the near, around uh, i think they are nearing around 200 kilometers from its origin okay so they are returning back why this uh, travel had uh, okay but this not this is not been confused with the home range home range is a different thing and uh, widely speaking uh, in case of other species we can say home range is like that in case of elephant such concept cannot be uh, actually valid because uh, elephant is a large moving animal and it Uh, it, in in particular season it moves more distance or travel that uh, long distance as we had seen in china so uh, that's why the people have kept it uh, the average home range around uh, approximately 600 kilometers speaking about the elephants and its social organization uh, the elephants know uh, you can see the herd of elephants uh, herd of elephants means a group of elephants that is some, most probably you can see only three or four or two like that uh, but sometime in movies and other uh, rarely when uh, when we walk through forest also we can see a large herd also uh, the herd formation is depending upon the habitat why i am saying like this no uh, when a forest or a particular region where predation is more i mean uh, say you may ask a question a predation means a tiger may attack Uh, elephant or a lion lion is not here or uh, some other leopard 
is it possible to attack an elephant uh, that, that you may ask no you most pro mostly uh, we, i also have seen that a group of uh, tiger is attacking uh, this thing no and uh, elephants and discovery channel but i never had seen that an elephant a tiger any Uh, of course it is true that uh, elephant the mature elephants or uh, the the aged elephants are not been attacked by tiger but 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 uh, the kids you no know, i mean the small elephants you no know, of one a one year or two year today also i saw it in newspaper that is an elephant is elephant cub is been killed by a tiger at i think it's a mudumalai uh, it uh, killed by a, a tiger okay so a cub have a threat a cub have a threat so when threat is there in an environment the elephant used to form large groups uh, bigger groups of around 15 it can be around up to 15 when a two or three cubs are there in their group they form a large group that will help a group will help because in the group no tuskers i mean the male elephants are rare sometimes it may be there but uh, the full fully mature adult uh, uh, elephants not be there in a group so they want to protect themselves you no know, they so they form a group and the, when predation risk is there they assemble together to form a large group and protect themselves but if uh, uh, habitat is okay but there is a problem when they form large group what is that no they used to eat i told you how much they eat okay they used to eat a large number of uh, i mean they depend upon a large number of uh, plants okay so there will be a competition when a large number of uh, uh, people, uh, members are there in a that's right because if elephants are in a small groups elephants are in a small group there will not be any uh, complication there will not be any competition they can feed on the, as, as they like or they can search for them but uh, it is the case is different when the group is uh, large their the resources are limited if the resources are limited there starts competition so according to the habitat where they live they form uh, based on these criteria the group size may different and, uh, 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 and the, the predation probability predation probability the quality of the habitat the availability of the food source these are uh, actually designing uh, the, the this of, i mean the group formation of an in an elephant similarly who will be there in a group usually you can see that the female elephants are there along with the cubs or kids or premature elephants of different ages you can see male elephants with short tusks also because they are not mature elephants usually get mature by 15 years or 16 years around they will get mature okay but uh, until then they will be remained in the group and uh, the kids will be all, uh, perfectly under the supervision of the mother if uh, uh, if they kid is there or a cub is there uh, in the elephant group it is better not to take any photograph or to approach uh, near the elephant because there is a uh, 100% chance for a uh, charging uh, by the elephant okay so you should be careful when a kid is there otherwise now these elephants will not bother about you okay uh, and uh, wh what happen now when uh, it become mature the tusker or the bull elephant that will get separated from the group and go alone and it used to roam separately or singly uh, occasionally it may form certain groups with other bachelors also that is uh, recessive bachelors also that is happening okay that's also observed but generally they used to roam as i told you about the rivaldo and uh, and they uh, or during the period of must or uh, during the period of uh, uh, mating and they approach a group and take one female elephant and they will breed and the female elephant will come again back and the elephant uh, male elephant will go on. at the that particular season only this uh, male elephant may see near the uh, female group and uh, this uh, female group you no know, this elephant group have a leader and that leader is a matriarch matriarch in the sense means a grandma she is the grandma is leading this group she is controlling because Uh, elephant you know he have a long life span around 45 to 60 years it will be you know 
during this time we acquire a lot of knowledge regarding the source of water where we have to migrate when there is a scarcity of food and all these things that matriarch know i mean that grandma know so she will be she will be guiding the elephants she will be guiding the other uh, cow elephants in the group or the subadult elephants in the group in this concept in this, and she know over the, the regarding the threats and the availability of the food the water source and other things so she will be the leader not he the she will be the leader of the group male elephants may seen occasionally near the group this is due to sexual attraction and nothing else okay sometimes some male elephants may see in around the group also because it has been defeated or it has been a sub submissive submissive male elephant may also remain near the group also but usually the male elephant do not be there near the group and as these are the studies says and we also have observed like that but the such type of bonding most of our scientists are looking the asian elephants based on the african elephants and uh, they are making concepts and theories based on the african it have a strong bondage african elephants have a strong bondage unlike asian elephants the even if you, you can see that when sometimes no uh, the, you can read this type of uh, news in really in our newspapers that uh, when a cub or a group of a group member got entangled in uh, in a particular place or in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in an area the other elephants will stand nearby Uh, and they will try to make them escape so in recently in gudalur also around one week before i also read in the newspaper that a subadult elephant got uh, entangled subadult kid something you now that got entangled in the uh, marsh and they were there were they, these elephants were there and the people cannot go there and help that uh, that cup to be get escaped because these are they are surrounding this so such type of relations the emotions that uh, human being usually animals don't have any emotions and other things okay but elephant no like uh, us it have also gr gr great cranial capacity and uh, it have feelings and emotions that's why this group formation and it is standing near a particular uh, cub or something no when there is a threat or in a danger of all these things coming to threats what are the major threats the elephants are facing presently elephants are as you know that there are habitat habitat loss or habitat uh, fragmentation then another term is the degradation of the habitat what is a habitat loss see you can see that uh, uh once upon a time the, there was a continuous the, the forest in the western ghats or nearing nearby areas are continuous continuous but when we when we approach or start occupying this this area we found a suitable residential area and we remove the forest and uh, like you can see in the picture that is in the right side ex exactly on the left side where the forest has been fragmented forest has been fragmented and is splitted uh so that uh, and they started people start occupying this for residents uh, or uh, for agriculture and uh, these things no that is called as the habitat loss and when people human habitation is there that uh, make no entry to the elephants and other things like animals like things so uh, so this is this is called as the habitat loss or habitat uh, 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 fragmentation and another thing in the existing habitat also that is called as the degradation of the habitat what do you mean by degradation of habitat fragmentation and habitat degradation are two different things habitat degradation means a habitat which is suitable for a particular animal to live because a lot of uh, a particular fauna or specific fauna is sorry flora is present in that particular forest so that uh, uh, this uh, uh, floral components from the food of the species so when uh, some type of invasives come due to some anthropogenic influences whatever it may be a lot of anthropogenic whatever happen no that is due to the anthropogens human beings anthropogens in the means human beings when human beings uh, come to the uh, ha handle this habitat the quality of the habitat will be lost and this causes this causes uh the um, available uh, depletion of the available resources in the particular forest and when food resources are uh, getting vanished what these elephants do they will search uh, start roaming in search of food and they start coming to a boundary and after boundary they can see that food crops are been planted there 
plantains a lot of things are there you no know, they started depending upon them uh, and once it is been learned it continuously come to that place again and again because if we go back to uh, the forest uh, today also i read in some newspaper and in around uh, in kerala in palakkad district you no know, some elephants are staying there because they don't want to go back to the forest because the food is more available in the town than the forest that is what i mean the quality of the habitat is this de- getting destroyed or habitat degraded so that, that that is another important issue we are saying that the forest is there but but what elephant want not in case of elephant other species it's applicable for other species also what the elephant want to eat is not there inside the forest then where will it go so that is called as the destruction of the or the depredation of uh, the uh, habitat quality so this is an important factor we needs to address people used to say it in a simple word that this particular elephant named as bahubali in metopalayam it is continuously raiding our crop a bahubali or a particular elephant bahubali let me say bahubali is a uh, the term given to a wild elephant which is uh, doing i mean the crop raiding uh, in the metopalayam region okay so what 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 is happening okay see when the for habitat quality is not there elephants start coming to the fringe area and they found they have start finding a new place where a lot of food are available so they take their food and they learn because it being an intelligent animal they learn uh, where we need not to go anywhere we can go there and eat the food okay so people used to refer the term crop crop raiding for the particular elephant it is destroying our crops it is destroying our crop but uh, the reason should be addressed the reason is not been properly addressed okay so they start retaliating against the elephant and a lot of conflicts occur then another thing you can see that uh, this uh, type of highways and elevated uh, such type of highways that can cause a lot of destruction to uh, the habitat um, and you can uh, see let me say something about the corridor that i wish to say an an a term named the corridor what do you mean by corridor corridor is the uh, particular path of the elephant path in the sense means a, a path which is not been daily used by elephant that is not a corridor but corridor is generally termed in case of african elephants in case of african elephants you may have seen in the discovery channel that this group of elephants move kilometers and kilometers when Uh, drought come no when water and other things are not uh, available it move to a particular area where the food and food is available so it will go there and uh, once the condition will be written they will also return so they they know they know a particular path they learned they are conditioned to move through a particular path that's why i told that you are been this have been led by elephants are been led by matriarch matriarch that's why i i first uh, so they have learned how to go there so these are all this matriarch is leading the elephants to go so these path were elephants moving uh, uh, in between seasons or uh, according to availability of food are generally referred as corridors and uh, corridor is not a home range or a particular home range is in the sense means it's a particular region the elephant are moving that is generally called as a corridor that is called as a sort of home range but corridors are the path it moves to another habitat because you can see an example like uh, you can see a, a highway like region forested region which is connecting one habitat with another habitat and this habit these are called as corridor these corridors are been created these corridors are been created you can uh, by, uh, by human beings only how what due to the human pressure due to the human anthropogenic stress the other regions are converted into grass i mean the agriculture lands or uh, regions which are been utilized by human beings so that a particular path but there are still controversies regarding this corridor okay uh, how and uh, this so whatever it may be when elephant move from uh, let imagine there is this is one meta population meta population in the sense means a population a region where some elephants are living and this is another region a kilometers or 100 kilometers apart or 50 kilometers apart uh, there is another forested region where another group of elephants are uh, living so when there is a scarcity of food or water or due to the seasonal change the elephant move from this place to that place okay and what is the benefit of uh, such type of movement is they can exchange the gene among themselves so that there will be hybridization or uh, I mean exchange of gene pool i mean uh, one, it's not hybridization in the terms of it is not uh, intergenic hybrid inter species or nothing like that what i mean is 
it's a, another one population and you imagine it's a second population then it uh, exchange its genes that is that will be beneficial for the that is beneficial for the sustenance of the elephant okay uh, that is what i mean okay that is a benefit but what happened now these corridors are getting narrow due to the human and human pressure and when elephant will not move in a half kilometer length or a one kilometer length as defined by the people okay it it what elephant want to on the way also elephant want to eat elephant want to eat no at that time people are cultivating uh, uh, food around uh, these corridors so what happened it used to eat all the way it used to eat or it walk or whatever it want to do no that, that will do so uh, that is why another reason for the conflict that's why the forest department is saying that there are elephant corridors has to be conserved and the conservation of the elephant corridor are Uh, most probably most in most cases it is not possible because human habituation surface there people started constructing houses in the corridors people started creating uh, um, uh, many type of lodges and uh, uh, cottages in the corridor ways or started doing agriculture in the, and when elephant is not bothered about the human habituation or something else no about those things no that will destroy what will come into the uh, creates the problem um there is a book named uh, right to passage written by you now vivek menon and uh, a lot of other scientists like isa see uh, they have identified uh, certain corridors that are present in india they have started working on the corridors they started uh, marking the corridors they have identified a lot of corridors in there see you can see that four major corridors they have recognized yeah that's seen here and uh, another one in the east india in the central india and in the southern india there are major corridors they are identified recognize the corridors they track the elephants and recognize the corridors in coming to the uh, when the nilgiri i mean the western ghats where i am i am i am working see the these uh, scientists they have identified many important corridors you can identify around 20 elephant corridors in the brahmagiri brahmagiri means uh, uh, the region kur uh, near to kur and vayanad and in nilambur silent valley zone another two elephant corridors are identified in agastyamale that is agastyamale is in the southern uh, region of uh, india where they identified one corridor in parambikulam area they identified one corridor and still researchers are going on then they are saying that there are a lot of corridors other than these places and even in mudumalai there are corridors and there are a lot of researchers are going on where the elephant moves okay uh, so these are these corridors are very important as far as the elephants are being concerned and uh, as i told you earlier these are large animal these are large animal and when they walk they want to eat a massive animal no they want to eat what all the uh, what all come to its what all it like and what all come to its way and uh, in these cases there starts the conflicts there starts the conflicts okay uh, conflicts in the sense means when uh, elephants start raiding the crops no crop the people will not sit simply i have seen many occasions the forest department what they used to do they dig uh, to protect uh, from elephant they dig uh, i mean channels or uh, i mean uh, what is called as uh, gaps or uh, holes no uh, around the buildings what uh, elephant elephant is a, a highly intelligent and intelligent animal and uh, what they do you know they try to break any barrier that will be created by the forest department so let me say an example a common thing is a fence electric fence usually dcs are being used and direct current is being used battery current are used and when elephant come to the uh, touch the i mean the fence no it gets shock and it uh, will get afraid and not come but for some days it will be like that later on elephant will learn that uh, if you push a tree over it uh, the line will get earth and the battery loses its charge further on there will not be any problem so what people used to do people instead of using the battery illegally they put ac volt inside uh, so the, this land elephant it is thinking that uh, now no problem is there uh, it's a dc if you push a plant or a tree on it that will get earth and uh, We, we can travel easily but the ac is now now what the human beings uh, have done they have connected the ac so that what happened when elephant try to cross it uh, the uh, shock will uh, it will get shocked uh, due to uh, the current passage these type of problems are there and uh, other than this see, see 
people having huge money can create this uh, such type of uh, uh, trenches or uh, even if you construct trench you know the elephant what it do you know it uh, try to pull two or three trees and cross try to cross uh, the trench or what it do you know it uh, start pushing on the side and make path to get into into a try into a trench then it walk through the trench and find a find a, a less deeper area here also it push its uh, use its trunk to push down the uh, earth and it uh, they use this as a path so trenches are also not been effective in present days okay so what people used to do people who had don't have the money and other thing uh, they started uh, throwing bulbs or bombs bombs what is they how they used to used to make no take a bulb a fused bulb and they pour some uh, kerosene inside it seal it and uh, uh, fire it and throw on the elephant such type of uh, such type of incidents are common okay and uh, the, the then some scientists come with a technique that uh, they will create a, a, record, a tiger sound has been recorded and it's played near the elephant so elephant started running this this was a successful first step first time but uh, when we used to continuously elephant learned that this is too much uh, i mean these uh, people are uh, cheating us uh, so we don't need to bother about this type of activities Uh, and there are human beings started another type of uh, method i mean uh, method that is uh, uh, making the sound of honey bee uh, yes uh, elephant is elephant is afraid of the honey bee and when uh, honey bee sound is been played elephant uh, try to escape from that place so that is been used but what happened no elephant learned again <laughs> this is a, a cheating method no we need not to bother about those things okay so this is the problem the, the problems cannot be mitigated so you can see that uh, uh, you may have read about uh, this thing or we have seen these uh, pictures or movie that an elephant is been thrown uh, with fired uh, uh, tire and this there is an uh, like revolt as i told you know then there is an elephant near uh, in mudumai itself Uh, what the people there are a lot of cottages in mudumalai these cottages people you know what they used to do you know they used to put uh, uh, fruits and other for the elephant so that uh, people who are staying i mean the tourists who are staying in the cottages can see the elephant and watch the elephant so this type of some elephant some age old elephants you know that will weaker elephants that will come and stay uh, come and come near this cottages to eat because they are sure that they'll get the food from this cottage people and uh, the tourists will be so happy and they will give more money to the cottage owner so this is this is happening you no know, uh, what happened you no know, one time uh, accidentally uh, 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 the uh, tire the fired tire is thrown over the elephant just yes, they want to uh, they want to chase the elephant actually in the, in the but an accident it occurred you have read the this thing you no know? and uh, that uh, tire unfortunately got entangled on the uh, ears of the elephant and uh, the body of the elephant got fire and burned this is a so pathetic uh, situation but i'm not speaking that uh, but i'm not speaking that uh, uh, always uh, the elephant on the conservation point of view i i have seen many people who don't have any other uh, way to live other than the agriculture uh, they have a family they are depending upon this agriculture like plantain or some type of crops which elephant like to feed on and they are depending upon this crop you know at that time when if elephant elephant come at the time of harvesting near nearing harvesting if elephant come and destroy all these things their dreams their lives it is also getting uh, destroyed similarly uh, in some houses you no know, it have uh, toilets uh, outside the home so in night time they want they want to go to toilet they get open because their houses are so small and they get out of the house and at that time if any imagine if an elephant is standing in front of you what you what you can how can how, how your feeling will be you just want to go for toilet and you just come out of the house at that time an elephant is standing in front of you and it may attack you that things are been happened sometimes you no know, the people the estate people after they after the labor their work their work may be over by 4 o'clock 5 o'clock or something they came home and they go to get some grocery by 6 or 7 o'clock and they, around half a kilometer apart they're collecting the grocery and if come back you now imagine through a for i mean a state area they are traveling and an elephant is standing in front of it. how the feeling of the villager will be so we can we cannot uh, we should have a prob- we should have a sustainable development i mean the problem should be this the problem mitigation the problem should be 
uh, considering by considering the both if he is sitting out if, if, if i'm i'm living in a near forest area so i'm seeing this issues of the people that's why i'm speaking about if you are not been in such an area you may not aware of this they may say that what the cool people they are throwing these things over the elephant these all situations these all emotions that have prompted them to attack the elephant because they want to leave it's an inherent uh, feeling of a human being to leave here i want to leave i want to feed my children or i want to uh, make a life or i want to get some money okay uh, so what their feeling will be they want to go any level or any extent that's what is happening in such type of thing the uh, the problem is the mitigation is not at the grassroots level uh, it is happening because why these elephants are coming out why these elephants are coming out they are not uh, bother the people who are addressing these issues are not bothered about this these are elephants are coming because of the habitat quality is destroyed it is not getting anything to eat inside the forest that is where it is coming to the human being human habitation and it getting uh, trained or learned so if you address the problem at the grassroots level imagine two people are fighting two people are fighting uh, due to some reasons two people imagine two people are fighting in near our home now neighbors are fighting near our home we are addressing a problem to prevent their fight we should address the address the root cause why they are fighting what the reason what due to what reason they are fighting but what we are trying to do we are just trying to stop their fight this will not have any solution the solution is to be addressed at the grassroots level see this is a uh, i got it in whatsapp this is uh, i think it's appeared in a newspaper uh, malayalam daily kerala daily that is uh, the people the government of kerala is given a notification that uh, if people have any suggestion people sign this anyone anyone have any suggestion to mitigate the conflicts human animal conflict they can suggest this is a wonderful thing and i am seeing it for the first time because uh, otherwise no this mitigation things no that will be within the within the uh, officer level or scientist level now they everyone can say what is their opinion to the government of kerala they have given time up to august 10 or something they have given it the time up to august 10 and something if you want no you can also give some suggestions if you want okay so this uh, because the conflict is not the uni- the cause for the conflict is not universal that's what i'm speaking cause for the conflict is not universal the conflict the cause for the conflict differ from area to area i mean the reason occurring in the nilgiris or gudalur or pandalur or patavayal may be different from uh, dharmapuri or palakkad or some other region where elephants are present so a micro level or a strategy has to be developed that uh, uh, the regional level that's uh, uh, the people have to be uh, 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 understood okay so and another important threat let me speak about uh, another uh, uh, important uh, aspect is poaching 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 is another important threat to elephants okay but uh, in case of asian elephants poaching is considered as a minor threat you know that we have heard about the uh, forest brigand veerappan who killed number uh, hundreds of elephant for getting ivory and other things no so i see other than veerappan veerappan is a, a particular issue okay leave it out other than a lot of people are involved in the uh, conservation but the studies are saying that uh, when i go through the literature studies are saying that poaching is not a major issue for the asian elephant why because the tusks are made predominantly present for the male elephant alone okay and uh, so the threat is only for the solitary bull elephant and not for the female elephant no more no one is bothered about the uh, this uh, elephants i mean uh, bull elephant i mean cow elephants okay um, but uh, the studies and the seizure rates have shown that the study has uh, shown that still uh, the elephants are been poached for the ivory hmm? uh, let me uh, say that uh, uh, the male elephants are mainly uh located by i mean targeted by the because it's an uh, it's in a solitary environment it is easy, easy to, even though it is been aggressive it is easy to, to uh, track and kill particular male elephants okay so people are not bothered about the male, female elephant that is the most of the study is saying that uh, but what happened now well, let me say an uh, happening that in the periyar tiger reserve in periyar tiger reserve it is periyar tiger reserve is in kumali region that is in the border of uh, uh tamil nadu and kerala where 
uh, the continuous poaching has appeared in around 20 to 30 years back and what happened you now the sex ratio sex ratio you no know, for particular number of females there should be six, this much number of males should be there the sex ratio was it, one is to six that is one for six females something you no know? that it got changed to 1 is to 122 1 is to 122 due to the effect of this poaching so what happened so what happened what happened is one elephant cannot uh, capable of breed with these uh, 122 females so what is happening is the population is going to end that is a meaning if the sex ratio is altered sex ratio is altered it's an indication in a demography that the population is going to so people after studying this they understood the real issue and they addressed the problem now the sex ratio has improved well and good and at very very at tigers but even this i told you that uh, bull elephants are mean main mainly targeted when the female elephants are not been targeted but the studies from manmar by samson in 2018 they have shown that uh, it is a case is not like this in case in manmar in manmar the female elephants are been targeted by the poachers for the flesh they have used the telemetry studies for this and they and they found many carcasses like this and they identified that the skin and the meat are also targeted by the poachers uh of skin uh, of the female so female elephants are mostly been the victims of uh, such type of uh, poaching okay so what happened now we also received we also received a, in our we, we are doing wildlife forensics in our lab used to identify the species sex and other things in our lab we also received some samples uh, of elephants see you may ask a question what is the difficulty in asking identifying a, a elephant no why you have to do dna analysis for an elephant not that case if a carcass is there if a carcass is there or some small body fragment is there we should have to identify what the species it belong to and what is the sex, what is the intention intention in the sense means forest department is targeting that Uh, this remnant is uh, is belong to a uh, tusker or uh, something no uh, because bones are not present there sometimes bones only may be present the tusk may not be there but it's an intentional poaching or not that that time they used to do the dna analysis and we we are doing the dna analysis and uh, at that time we used, what we thought we also got some cases uh, like uh, um, what the cases we that was brought to our lab was female elephants so we have doubt that uh, such type of happening is been uh, taking place in, uh, in this western ghats also so we started collecting the details of the elephant one of our professor dr ramakrishna is an elephant expert uh, he collected uh, around the post mortem reports of uh, elephants around uh, in the southern region of uh, the tamil nadu from him i obtained the data Uh, regarding this uh, poaching incidents poaching incidents along other incidents i left and it and i examined the data then i found that uh, uh, in most of the poaching cases as it was male elephant only and uh, not a female elephant so we ruled out that uh, uh, the females have been poaching but still we are working on that we have doubt that whether females have been also been poaching for flesh and their bones but we don't get any evidence or something like that okay and we plotted this uh, incidents i i plotted this incidents uh, of poaching you no know, around 20 years uh, incidents data on google map then we find that it's most of the poaching incidents out of the elephant death or something we have ignored the other cases and we found that these deaths are happening in the western ghats mainly you can see around the nilgiris and the other things no this data is regarding only the tamil nadu part we now we obtain the data from throughout india uh, from some other sources and now we are examining the cases again okay that's on the part of the research i'm not showing here and if a poaching material is brought back to the laboratory what is uh, the analysis done in the laboratory that's going to be uh, explained okay if uh, poaching materials in the sense means mostly poached material i told you regarding the elephant is an ivory ivory when brought, when it is been captured there may be doubts elephant and uh, the forest department or the enforcement agencies don't know what it is because ivory may have been originated from uh, a walrus or some other animals which also some other animals also have a lot of animals also have either even though it is not long as an elephant and it we are not sure that say if asian elephant or it has been uh, imported from africa or these things that that confusions sometimes this material may be in the 
form of an idol uh, or some uh, attractive materials so that it is it will not be easy to find whether it is an original ivory or not so what type of desks are doing for ivory that's what i want to share with us first when we get a material what we used to do is simple test like hot needle test we just uh, uh, fire the i mean make a needle red hot and press it on the ivory okay uh, if charring is observed if blackish color like charring is observed then we can say that it is not a plastic material or a synthetic material it is an ivory then we used to then what we do we can powder it we can powder it using a driller or something so that this powder can be kept uh, like this you can let uh, this can be kept under uh, a uv lamp so that when what happen now it get uh, 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 it get so it shows it, it so that it shows illumination if it is an original bony material it shows illumination if it is a synthetic material it not not show illumination another thing no uh, that uh, you can you can touch you can touch because uh, even the the material the smoothness of the material the elephant the ivory the original ivory will not be that much smooth there may be some ridges but that ridges is not in a uniform pattern it will the pattern of the uh, the ridges or some projections no that will be differ if it is in a common pattern we should ascertain that it is a synthetic material that's another thing then we can uh, examine the cementum junction because uh, there is a junction you can see that there is a place if you are getting a cross section you can easily identify that it's a because a biomaterial no it have a, co a covering that is what you used to refer it as a cementum and another important thing to identify whether it confirm that it is an uh, asian elephant or african elephant or mammoth is the presence of the shudder lines that is a particular type of line you can see that we are examining the elephant tusk okay so that uh, let's say easy take the xerox machine using a xerox machine you take the cross section uh, uh, like get like this so uh, by using it can be enlarged or can examine under a microscope so that you can see such type of patterns that indicates it's a clear ivory then we can measure the angle of the shudder lines okay so it is if it is more than 115 degrees in degree i mean degrees or less than 1 by uh, degrees or less than 90 degrees or greater than 98 degrees that will help us to identify whether this ivory belong to mammoth elephant or any other species okay Uh, and another test is sulfuric acid test just pour a little sulfuric acid so that you cannot see any stains in that if it is a uh, true material uh, and uh, if it is more than i told you about the shudder lines if shudder lines is more than 115 degree uh, degrees uh, angle of the shudder lines i show you know this is more than 15 115 degrees then we can confirm that it's belonging to an asian elephant this is how ivory is been identified there is another technique um there is another uh, this is the map uh, uh, that is uh, 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 that we have uh, done some dna analysis okay that's why uh, another material is called as a dna analysis dna analysis can be done uh, in an ivory or in a uh, forensic sample of in under quest and other things no so at that time uh, at that time uh, if, if 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 it is not clear and you are not been uh, as, uh, not cannot ascertain the originality or genuineness of the material then we have to go for the dna analysis even from the uh, bone parts we can isolate the dna because there are uh, osteoblasts you no know, that uh, that may contain dna that can be isolated but it's a difficult process it may take some days to uh, uh, use to liquid nitrogen to soften it then edta to uh, dissolve the things and other and then we can do the dna analysis and other things you no know? and we have done a study uh, as, as a dna analysis continuously we are i mean uh, encountering the dna analysis we are getting the request more requests regarding the dna analysis we what we have done we need to we decided to standardize the material so we collected the samples from the or we took it as a reserve and we standardized uh, collected the dung as a material because dung also containing dna uh, also sometime now when forensic post mortem samples forensic samples or there is so we can get the dna so that that all things we used for standardization let me say what is uh, how a dna uh, is been used dna means this is a this is a region of it uh, um, and uh, ivory we can break it and collect the 
material powder the material then i take as i told you, you know using the liquid nitrogen and uh, uh, edta methods we can uh, isolate the uh, dna present in that dna what we are targeting is we you know that this is a cell and uh, the cell containing a special organ called as mitochondria mitochondria has been targeted usually dna is present in the nucleus not that nuclear dna is uh, recognized i mean utilized for species identification species identification is mainly targeted on the dna that is present in the mitochondria mitochondria also have a dna that is called as mitochondrial dna you can see the mitochondrial dna then we can do the pcr for the amplification and you can do the sequencing and the sequencing will give you will tell you the truth what do it an elephant or not but this will cost the sequencing will cost more than much amount if you are handling a lot of samples because it costs the sequencing alone will cost around 1000 rupees or 1500 rupees something okay sequencing alone will cost so at that time uh, if you are analyzing a hundreds of sample no 10000 into 100 how much it will come imagine okay this much of amount will come on lakh amount rupees will come so at that time uh, so what we decided we will develop a technique we will develop a technique that will directly identify the uh, uh, and the elephant on in gel itself gel running gel itself a little uh, cheaper material so we also we have done a uh, technique known as allele specific material where we targeted the species identification region and we uh, identified a particular uh, nucleotide that is present in there if that nucleotide is present that will be an elephant and that way we, we are developed some theoretical consideration we tested we tested whether it is our concept is correct using the tissue blood other species also and with the dung what all materials what we got we tested and what is the benefit of this just by image uh, running an electrophoresis by amplification and running an electrophoresis we can identify whether it is an elephant uh, uh, species particular species or not and that uh, that technique has been developed and uh, that make the thing cheaper okay running cheaper okay so if you uh, see if you use such type of techniques no in a routinely working lab around 100 samples if we handle it comes around 2000 rupees only but if you go for sequencing it will cost around uh, it will cost around uh, Uh, it will cost around 10 uh, or 1 lakh rupees and all so such type of techniques we have developed it's on the way of publication also uh, similar type of see similar type of technique we used for the sex identification also sex identification can also be it's a more costly affair and in sex identification we are trying it in the micro capillary analysis based on certain micro satellites and we are identifying the uh, sex but uh, this type of techniques in locally called as uh, 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 this uh, allele specific techniques where we know that the male male have x and x female do not have uh, uh, sorry um, uh, uh, such type of uh, techniques can be developed now in case of uh, um, male elephant uh, it have uh, uh, two x uh, two one x and y one by chromosome while female have a uh, two x chromosome Um, what happened now at that time uh, if uh, two bands are formed we can assume it as a male elephant a female elephant and if single ba- uh, single band is formed it is uh, considered as a male elephant if two bands are formed. so such type of techniques we have developed the similar techniques we developed and published in tiger okay such type of techniques we are now trying in uh, asian elephants also uh, i think uh, now that's all uh, to for today uh thank you sir dr ramji sir for giving me an opportunity uh i think i have uh, i don't know whether i have gone much uh, depth or not uh, i have tried to avoid uh, to in going in depth because i am basically i told you i am a biochemist and uh, i turned into bio my biology so when i speak i used to go usually to the molecular biology that will quickly have not really happen that's why to avoid that and to cover that that i have uh, gone through the other aspects just the superficial i touch the molecular parts alone uh, if it is is it uh, i think it's uh, clear for you and uh, i've done uh, i try to explain it to the minimal level thank you so much for giving me an opportunity thank you so much and thank you so much sir uh, thank you sir thank you sir sir you can now stop your share screen ha sir yes. Sir, sir, you, you can now stop your share, share screen, sir. Okay, sure, sure, sir, sure, sir, sure, sir, sure, sir. Sure, so sir. let the participants can let the participants can view. One minute, one minute, sir, one minute. There is an issue. Okay, sir. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. I will stop it now. Okay. I think it is stopped, isn't it? Okay, sir. Clear, sir. Ah. Okay. Uh,
you have the participants can see you know sir that's why then you can also get your participants so thank you so much sir you have given a lot of ideas today and we have you have really really boom up us on this day okay sir, thank you sir sir shall we go on for a questioner session sir Uh, oh, sure, sir. Sure, sir. sir. What? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Sure, sir. What I know, I'll explain. That's all. <laughs> I'm a teacher, basically. <laughs> Not a great elementary researcher. Okay, you can ask me. Whatever I know, I. Sir, can you able to see the? Yes, nowadays, no, nowadays, Kartika tea. Nowadays, yes. people turn the elephant as a domestic animal. In this manner, can save the animal or hides. That's what I'm speaking about. the uh, making i mean domesticating domestic what she is asking is a perfect question because uh, who is doing that the people i mean we people we people want to make money that's our main in the intention is what our main intention is to make money whatever it may be whatever reason it may be and uh, we are not bothering about uh, getting a uh, daily daily bread what we are bothering about we want to make money for when this and this actually an after effect of tourism but the, the who who is making these animals domesticated you should have to think that who is making these animals domesticated there are a lot of cottages inside the forest and these cottage people they want to entertain the tourists and they are offering food for the animals so that animals will come in come near the cottage and this will be a a happiness to the people who are staying in the cottage seeing an elephant seeing a, a deer or seeing a bison so that the food is been offered food is been offered and the taming the elephant one day when tourists are not there these people will not provide any food to these animals okay and what happen once it is getting tamed it start attacking or searching into the nearby villages that's what is happening this is the after effect okay this is not a good way okay that's what uh, that's what happened in case of revolved old so that uh, i mean I, i told you about in the initial part of my speech who so who is responsible we people are responsible so we should have to uh, go back that's what my suggestion is next question is kartike and what is uh, what is the solution to our that's what i'm suggesting you uh, there is no solution to avoid the human animal conflict human animal conflict human animal conflict is a broader issue okay because uh, not only elephants are raiding the top uh, if you come to high range area or or uh, any other area which is near the wild uh, pigs are coming wild pigs are coming into the forest uh, sometimes sambar deer itself is coming porcupines are coming so these all together con con constitute the human animal conflict other than this carnivores are coming so it is a huge topic to discuss at present i'm saying that what i'm saying is we have to separate each issue and try to address it at the root cause level that's what i'm speaking about when talking about the uh, habitat quality okay so we what we are trying to uh, uh, solve now mitigate now that means we are putting fence around the forest so that animal cannot come out that is not the reason that is not the true way because we are preventing preventing the, we are preventing uh, the animal because animal want to come outside because there is no habitat quality there is no water there is no food availability inside the forest so that it, it is a quite natural that it will come outside okay so the problem is to be addressed by improving the habitat quality and uh, Uh, that that itself have a lot of issues okay that has to be addressed as far as uh, in my concepts and some sorry for interruption sir sir so, this is ramit okay. trivedi and he ah. is one of uh, one of our uh, resource person too sir he is uh, ah. he is studying age standard and doing a wonderful job for the conservation who oh, he is studying in age standard age standard sir with uh, okay. with the team members of six members is there it's the same age Great. group and uh -huh. uh, these guys are uh, jointly uh, saving all the animals and also the dog in the street uh -huh. Uh -huh. from the street and also uh, by uh, with the by uh, with the help of uh, recycling they are uh, making some product with this okay, product good, good, good. they are selling okay, in the in the places with this with this money they are giving to the ngos 
the next question please i think it's i have answered this question Karthik again, thanks for answering my question, sir. That's all. Okay, okay, okay. She is my student. Anjuria is my student. <laughs> uh, very nice information session. Okay. Okay, she is my student. <laughs> she is my PhD student. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, the same is been repeated, sir. Ah, same thing is been repeated. Okay. Ah, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. I can meet you when you are giving another talk now, or in a session. I can meet you. I will watch your program. Sir, shall I proceed with a formal WhatsApp and Sure, sir, sure, sir, sure. Thank you, sir, so much. Sure. Okay. So, good evening. I, on behalf of my institution and myself, I'm here to deliver the WhatsApp thanks speech. I'm really thankful to my management and the principal for giving me a chance to deliver this speech. Ladies and gentlemen, and the participants, I want to thank our resource person. Dr. R. Sanil, sir, for his active participation in our webinar. Sir, you truly make this day full of knowledge for us. Your deep and intellectual way of importing knowledge has added to the glory of this webinar. Today, we have got a lot of information which will truly help us in our life. We have no words to offer gratitude for your valuable presence in this webinar, sir. You gave deep okay. insight into the topic and revealed I'm interesting fact too. This webinar was truly worthy. Sir, you really motivated us to gain more and more knowledge and work forward in our respective field. I would also thank want to thank the head of the institution and my teachers and the students. A big thanks to our participants. Thank you to all the participants for attending this webinar and paying attention. I will end my speech here. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir. Nice meeting you, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, shall I leave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Sure. Thank you.